Steve-O. Yo. My guy, we are back at it again. It's not just the odd couple. We still got Hayes. We still got C-Dub. Steve-O, you and I have already covered two-thirds of the Eastern Conference, the Atlantic Division, and then the Southeast Division. Today, we are going to discuss the Central Division with our team, the Chicago Bulls, Cleveland Cavaliers, Detroit Pistons, Indiana Pacers, man. Let's get into it right after the intro. So. Welcome to the number one place for your daily basketball news and analysis, NBA Central. What's the word, Chicago? Not Chicago. NBA fans, we are going to talk about the Central Division in the Eastern Conference. And honestly, man, I, I don't even know what to think about the Chicago Bulls. We can start with them and get them out the way uh, because we talked about them a lot this post this this postseason. But we got the Chicago Bulls running it back once again. They finished third in the Central Division last season, and they made it to the play-in tournament. Won a game and then lost to the Miami Heat in tragic fashion after leading late in the fourth quarter, just not being able to come out on top. How are we feeling about the Chicago Bulls coming into this season after losing in the play-in tournament last year? Anybody? You see how hesitant we are to talk about these motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm not. I was just waiting on you because I want to. Yeah, see I know. Yeah, no, y'all go. Me? I don't want to go. Y'all listen, go. Fuck that. Listen, the Chicago Bulls. At the end of the day, they've improved in the areas that is kind of most important to this team. Uh, when you look at the fact of the Bulls losing 17 games last season by a score or less, seven of those games being by the, in games that they scored more field goals, but because the other team shot threes. They lost, still lost the game. The Bulls added three-point shooting. They added defense. They added veterans in those spots, so you know exactly what you're getting. The Bulls improved in the margins. Now, they're also getting a healthy Zach Levine to start the season. On top of all those things, if you get another step from Kobe or anybody else, it raises the ceiling. The Bulls are going to win more games this season. The biggest question is, is can they stay healthy? How consistent is that defense going to be? And how do the improvements in the margins help the core three play a little bit better? I think the Bulls did decent for what they had at, at their disposal this offseason, and we're going to see. I do think that the Bulls – listen, the Indiana Pacers are definitely looking to get better and make a move. The Detroit Pistons, we should definitely still be better than. Um, the Milwaukee Bucks, especially now, uh, they have no chance. But I do think that the Bulls are going to get enough wins to, to, to again, either avoid that plan, hopefully, or still fight through the plan once again. Absolutely. Um Damn, he just really knocked it on the head. But I would say it like this. The Bulls have really just retooled with different weapons. So it's slightly a better team. But it's a different strategy and a different focus and a, um, a, different, a different way about going everything. They said recently in an interview like uh, that they didn't become a team into the play-in tournament. They, they as, didn't feel like a team. They, yeah, they, you know, season. you know, they ain't feel like a team. That's 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 her sounds bad to me. I, I mean, ain't that part of of being on a team on a this bond and bond with your teammates? I mean, that's crazy. That that mean, what you mean? That don't, you don't like each other? I bet you every other team that these guys been on. I bet you that every other team that these guys been on in college and everything. You know, they bonded. They went out to eat. They went to clubs and stuff like that. I know life, you get busy and stuff in lifetime, but when the great teams, they bond together. If you look at the Lakers, they all bond together, including LeBron James, the Denver Nuggets as well. So uh, that's I think, really, I hope they can get that together. See, Dub, I think part of that might be on the fact that the two leaders, Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan, they didn't look like they were on the same page for the majority of the season. It, it was DeRozan playing iso ball. And Zach Levine making shots more difficult than they needed to be. And then the rest of the squad having to stand around and watch them do that. Steve O, how you feeling about the Bulls coming into this season? We're gonna be fucking mid. That's what we're gonna do. Y'all sit here being all nice and shit. We're gonna be mid. 
we're going to be mid. Ain't too much changing. Yeah, we added some shooting and some defense here, but it ain't going to be too much of a difference. We're going to still be winning around the same amount of games, and we're going to redo this shit until this shit changes. That's all it's going to be. Steve-O. When the, the shots that the Bulls have added would take them from being the 30th team in the league at three-point attempts to in the top 12. That's not a minor change, bro. It's not. That's not a it's, minor change. I still got to make, bro. We other you you saying from a stat standpoint, which I don't disagree with you in, but we've seen a lot of players come in here and they ain't play shit near their stats. They play completely different. I don't have the same trust that we just gonna come in and let J- Javon be Javon. Give me an example of that, Steve O, that you just yeah, mentioned. I feel like lately the players that have been coming in have been playing to themselves. So I think Vucevic is playing the way he plays. Zach went healthy. Debo played Zach has not been playing the way he is because he's one of the greatest off-ball shooters, and we ne- le- neglect that completely. And we just completely go ISO with DeMar, and the only thing we did recently is he started to attempt maybe a, a shot or two from the three-point range. That's about it. But – there is multiple things you can do to make this team immediately barring any moves that we made, but we don't have the staff to do it. That's my main concern. I don't, I, the talent is what there. About, what about Patrick Beverly's effect? They went 14 and 9, 14 and 11. He's like no longer that on the team. I know, I know, but I would say Javon Carter, of course, he's ain't on team, Kev. I'm just saying. <laughs> Javon, <laughs> Javon, I just had to have extra it. literal ass, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, Javon Carter is a better Patrick Beverly to me. So that instantly sure. makes yeah. the team better. For sure. But then I believe, like, I don't know if he's the leader that Patrick Beverly he don't have, is either. He don't need, he don't, but he don't we can't that. say that because we see a different a role player. We've seen a, 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 a pretty more active basketball team and more of a camaraderie come around when he came to this team. Yes, that's a fact. That's and, I mean, What's, and. And and that's my worry, like that, like what you just said. We didn't feel much as like a team. Ma, we've been together for two years now. What you mean? I'm more so concerned with the coaching staff. I just do Me not too. trust Billy Donovan to put the Bulls in situations to win. I think about the many opportunities when you said uh, earlier, see the um, uh, uh, Hayes uh, about how many games they lost that were within one score. The fact that they couldn't even draw up a proper inbound play all season last season just stands out to me. They ran the same play straight to DeMar. Well, even then, it was sometimes no, because there was a a couple of games where DeMar was the person passing it in the inbound, and nobody could move to get open. Like, it's no idea. None. None. The situational awareness in late inbound calls was absolutely garbage. And that's right. 100 coaching. So I'm I'm concerned about the coaching. I mean, like, and that's I like, why, and not to cut you off, but that that that's why I think we're going to be mid. It's not the talent. It's the it's the. Co- I don't believe we're going to adjust. Wait, what's mid? What's mid though? Coaching. No, 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 be no. Mid. I mean, mid is what we ended off last year. Forty and forty two. Forty and forty two. Play in you putting in the boys in the play in or no? Yes. Okay. That's about it. Mid. And we might lose again. Mm. Okay. Okay. So g- give me a quick win total. Last season, the win Bulls total, had 40 wins. 40 wins. I say 41, 40, 39. 39 <laughs> to 41. This guy. I'm being honest. I, I just, I just, he like Brandon Staley to me. Y'all can play the perfect game until it matters. And then he going to make us lose somehow. <laughs> he going to call one dumb play, or it's going to be either Zach going to have a, a, a goofy moment, or DeMar going to have a goofy moment. Or we not going to feed Vooch like how we should to. That's another thing, hey. We don't feed Vooch properly. I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, you want to know the most shocking thing? I'm surprised he resigned. he resigned. Yep. I would have left. I would have been on the first flight to Phoenix right now if I was him. He well, can't play with they, them. He, Why he, not? He ain't getting, getting touches now. He gonna get Why them. not? He won't touch us. He won a championship. He won a he won championship. A cha- <laughs> yeah. If I get a championship, I don't give a damn about no touch. You, you right. I wouldn't have resigned here oh, if I was no. I didn't. I he didn't think play. he would resign. But I agree with you guys. All right, so moving on from the Bulls, we, we're going to talk about the Indiana Pacers. Now, they made a couple of moves. They got a, some good draft picks. Um, Bruce Brown is now. He's a, a champion. He's going to bring that championship mentality to the squad. We still got Halliburton taking another step forward. Buddy Hill still on the trading block, but he's he's a valuable shooter. 
for these guys. Uh, TJ McConnell, is a Chicago Bulls killer. Um, <laughs> Obadiah Toppin is now there as well. <laughs> And you know, it's so, <laughs> why you say it? this, this man? man this he don't dude. call him Opie at all. His, his name, name is Obadiah. Is his name is Obadiah Toppin. That's what his daddy name is. Daddy call him Obadiah. <laughs> I'm gonna call him Obadiah. Kim <laughs> <laughs> <This laughs> must be stopped, bro. Somebody got to stop <laughs> Obadiah Toppin. Who decided to let Kev lead this show? Bro? Like, come on, <laughs> he did. He did. He did. He he hey. rogue. He went rogue. No, seriously. So, how you guys feeling about the Pacers? They finished fourth in division, right? They were right there in the hunt for the play-in tournament. But they fell short toward the end of the season. We know what Ty- Tyrese Halliburton brings to the table. Can they take that step forward this season? I think they're going to be one of the main teams that give us hell next year. Because we played them so many times. I'm pretty sure. Well, how many times four we used times. We, so four, times. four times. Four mm-hmm. times. Yeah. So, they're going to – I say we win one. <laughs> honestly, I, I, bro, I honestly feel like they're that they're going to be that good. We got to stop inviting Steve O for it. <laughs> bro, you want me to be positive? I ain't nothing no, to be positive be about. Positive, but it be objective, bro. You gotta, you gotta Damn. let your own disgruntledness with this team. I'm being, <laughs> you go I'm completely <laughs> left with it, bro. Like, bro, they, they almost see, Steve bro, they O be in a good mood. Part. You mentioned Chicago, a Chicago sports team. This man's whole it's, demeanor is over with. It's over. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> what you want me to be so, positive about? So we got Ty- Tyrese Halliburton and Miles Turner are the, the leaders of the squad, and then the rest of the pieces around. Miles him. Turner's not a leader of shit. <laughs> He's a veteran. He's not a leader. Come well. We I, know I, I ditto that. I will ditto that. that. But we do know what he's capable of. He's going to give you 20 and 10-ish numbers uh, for the majority of the season. So I just want to know what you guys think about them as far as taking a step forward. Like, they're not going to be better than Cleveland. They're not going to be better than Milwaukee. But can they surpass the Bulls in this division, or are they still going to be a step behind? No. I mean, they definitely can. I think when you look at Ben Matherin, he's going to be starting now to start the season off rather than come off the bench. You look at that starting line. That starting lineup has a, a Tyrese Halliburton, Ben Matherin, Bruce Brown, potentially Obi Toppin or Jerace Walker and Miles Turner. That's a it's, nice starting five. It's and they not, all not little either. Not, Paul. Yeah. And they you, got, got, you still got Jalen uh, Smith coming off the bench. TJ McConnell, who's a solid defensive player, he can hit some shots for you at some times. Uh, like I like a lot of the a lot of this team, right? The biggest question is, are they are they ready? Is the youth ready to take that step up, right? And so, yes, we've seen a lot of players have had really promising rookie seasons uh, uh, lately. Not really make that that huge step in the second season. Sometimes that comes in the third season. So, like if Ben Mathrum does make that step. It, the, it, the central division got to watch the hell out. You talking about? Uh, uh, I honestly think Tyrese Halliburton and Benedict Mathurin have the have best backcourt in the league potential within the next Ooh, three wow. five years. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, yeah, he's talented. You think he? Uh, you think he'll uh, find that that spark this year though, Ben Mathurin? It's he's gonna find it, but is it gonna be this year though? That that's the biggest question. Right? I don't know. It's gonna be, gonna be an year. overload. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure. I, I think he has the mentality too. Like this is a guy who, who came in his rookie year saying, "No, nah, LeBron gonna have to show me he's better." Yeah, than yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I yeah, love yeah, that. I wish we had somebody tough. with that edge on the Bulls, but like, yeah. we'll see, man. Yeah. And see, Doug, give me, give me some quick thoughts on the Pacers before. Uh, we move I on. just think it's a young team, and it's basically what my man Drip said. It's all based upon Ben Matherin, but I'm going to go on the route to say that it's going to be too much for him this first year. But he eventually going to get it. And that kid is a competitor to the highest degree. And right. he's got the skill to match. All right, sure. quick quick win total. They finished 35 and 47 last season. And just a 40. side note, 35 and 47. But they lost uh, seven out of their last 10 games and basically fell out, fell out of play in contention. What are we looking at? Steve-O just said 40 wins for the Pacers, 40. which puts them on pace with the Chicago Bulls from last year. 35. 40. 35. So you got, you got them staying the same, see that? Yeah, they stay the same. Now, didn't Halliburton get a little hurt last season, too, for a He straight? always get a little hurt. Yeah, yeah. So I, the way I see it, yeah. man, I feel like this is going to be another uh, all-star caliber season for Tyler hey, Halliburton. But I think we also, did like, a, we broke it up in another thing. He was with Team USA. Yeah, exactly. With Team USA, things happen. Exactly. I hey, think we're going to played get a, 56 games last season. They need him to play at least 60, 60 to 65. Yeah. Yep, 60, 65 games, and that'll be worth yes. four to seven wins. Um, you know, respectfully. So I just feel like they're going to, 
I hate to say it, and I'm not being disgruntled, but I feel like they're going to finish ahead of the Bulls if the Bulls don't come out and play as, as the way they're supposed to play because they haven't. We 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 watched the Bulls all season last season. So with these changes, with these changes that the Bulls have made, obviously they have what it takes to be better than Indiana. But Indiana not going to sit back and just let them be better than them this season. They ready to hey. They they it's some babies. Day. I'm just telling yeah, you. Yeah, and we some we some I don't know what the hell we hell we is. <laughs> It'll be pretty good, bro. I'll tell you. On All paper. Right. All right, so real quick on the Detroit Pistons. We already know they're a young team. They finished 17 and 65. Yeah. What, what, what is it? 17, yeah, 17, 65. 17 and 65 last season. They're getting Chase Cunningham back. They Chase got, Cade. Oh, my bad, my bad. Cade Cunningham back. Uh, Marvin Bagley is proven to be a little, you know, a little bit better than he was when he was on Sacramento. That's they, right. And they also picked up uh, one of the twins, right? Uh, Asura the Thompson. Thompson. Uh, uh, sure. Did he get it's hurt or was yeah. it the other one? Asura. It was Asura. Did, did Not the game, man. A man got hurt. So a man got hurt, and you know we know what that was Houston. Yeah. We know what Killian Hayes, Jaden Ivey, all these young fellas bring to the table. Even Hamadou Diallo has uh, been a pretty decent role player for them. Uh, how are we thinking about this? These guys, just real quick, because I don't expect them to make that big of a jump in the Eastern Conference, but they should be better than fifteen wins, right? Listen, They're, last time I saw yeah. Kate Cunningham, he looked like Bone Crusher. Um, <laughs> he would be, yo, what happened to Buddy, bro? Like, so I'm glad he's coming back. But that, like, listen, um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. I don't see nothing for Detroit. I'm gonna say this: they won 17 games last year, 18 games. Damn, <laughs> I think that's bro. Yeah. No, nah, bro, I'm y'all are bogus. Dub at least. Y'all bogus, I'm that. Dub at least. I, I honestly believe I they was like only that. 17 18, because K got hurt. He was gone most of the year. Mm-hmm. So K can play all he wants. He can play all he wants. Hey, I feel like, hey, when they, they was a better, the stat show, they was a better team with K and was on the floor. Facts, facts. So I, I, I won't, like, I'm not going to say a huge jump. I say max 25 wins. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm. I'll right. give them 20 wins. If I see them win between 25 and 30, I won't be surprised. I just don't think that they have enough, uh, you know, depth. They have the depth, but they just don't have enough know-how yet to take those necessary steps for it. You got teenagers on this team, players under 25, so on and so forth. The people who are over 30 aren't really – well, Between besides Bogdanovich, because he's still a bucket. He's one of those – uh, look like he should be a clergyman type dudes, but he can give you buckets. But besides that, I just don't see enough leadership <laughs> on this squad, and I just don't think that they're gonna they're gonna get it done. So, uh, that's that's it on the Detroit Pistons. Forty one gonna... games back is crazy. <laughs> that <ain't even laughs> that's nuts. That's nuts. All right, so the, crazy. now the top two teams in the Central Division, without question, are the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Milwaukee. Bucks. Now, I remember last season when we were doing stuff like this, we talked about how Cleveland had the potential to be better than the Chicago Bulls, and a few of our commenters were like, hey, fam, what you mean? Uh, especially, uh, you remember Shay. Shay was definitely upset that we said Cleveland had the potential to be better than them. Um, but at the end of the day, Cleveland Shea came out. He has a mold of Nikola Vucevic's nipples on his <laughs> world chair. Because you guys got to think. <laughs> when Nikola Vucevic, <laughs> Vucevic gets, when we give him going, he, <laughs> nobody can stop him. Jesus. <laughs> uh, but, so Cleveland, man, they still got Donovan Mitchell, we, we, uh, Evan Mobley. Um, these guys have a lot of potential in the Central Division. But do they have what it takes to really, truly compete for a championship? Of course, Jerry Allen, uh, they, they picked up Imani Bates. We, we liked him uh, out of college. Darius Garland, coming back from an injury, right? He was a little bit injured last season, correct? Yeah, he has some yeah. ankle injuries or foot injuries. You still got Karis LeVert. They picked up Evan Mobley's brother for to add a little bit of depth. Uh, Ricky Rubio. What Even though this Ricky Rubio, I swear, if I feel like Ricky Rubio is 47 years old, my man is only 32. <laughs> 32, bro. That's like, crazy. get the fuck. No, Damn, ain't man, no Ricky, way. Hold on. I've, no, been no. Playing, <laughs> I've been playing with that mug on two since 2K11. Ain't no way. Hell, yeah, that rug right. is 32. Ricky years old. Rubio is 32. He turns 33 before the start of the season. That's crazy. He's bro. the same he, age DeMar's as Christian older? Thompson. His Mars started basketball. Your Mars, yeah, Ricky yes. Rubio. Yes, he is. Yeah. 
He started bro, playing basketball right? very early. But hey, we do know move, hey, one thing about Ricky, if we do know one thing about Ricky Rubio, he he's a stabilizing uh force on offense. Uh, not necessarily as skilled as uh Rajon Rondo, but a Rajon Rondo type effect on the okay. game. Uh, for the Cleveland, get with that. Cleveland uh, Cavaliers. So, how are you feeling? They got 51 uh, wins last year. They have a maybe somewhat disgruntled Donovan Mitchell with the different things that we've been hearing. Uh, and they also picked up Max Struess for extra shooting. Yeah, yeah, how are you yeah. feeling about the Cleveland Cavaliers? Uh, they got wins. Yang, too. They got Yang, too, don't they? Yeah, oh, yeah. Damn, man. Oh, that was big. That's what I wanted him to come to the Bulls. 55 wins? That's good. That's a good. Man. That's a good. That's a good number for them. Uh, they a good regular season uh, team, but when it comes to the playoffs, I think this the two starting guards too small for me. Uh, uh, you, now you can't win a championship with two small guards like that. Little as hell. Look, mm-hmm. six two. The Dallas like Mavericks with Rody Bubar and uh, JJ Barea would like yeah. to have a word with you. <laughs> they had. I'm about to say, and they had Dirk. <laughs> And Sean Marion. Let's not overlook yes. the dirt. And Tyson Chandler. And Tyson Chandler. And Tyson Chandler. And Tyson Chandler. I forgot Tyson Chandler was on that team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he he was there. Tyson and Eddie um, Curry. Hey, I mean, hey, if, if Jerry can turn in his inner hey, Tyson come out, hey, shit. They, I mean, like I said, they had the, like I've always said, the, the person that's going to take this team over the top is when Evan turns into Evan. If Evan don't yeah. turn it to Evan, I don't see this team ever going that far. He definitely. How confident have... you is? Is that gonna come about though? He needs. To I mean, have he a... didn't turn it to him last year, but like, I'm gonna need him to go get in the lab with KG and him. Go talk to Hakeem like Giannis was, or even a Chris Bosh. Chris Bosh, right? Julius Randall can't bully you, bro. You can't let Julius Randall yeah. bully you. Yeah, and that's another thing. You need to get some weight up. I mean, it it was his first playoff experience. I think Evan Mobley, going through what he went through in the playoffs and getting his his skirt pulled down like that, I think he's going to come back out with some fire. He bad. Plus, he got his brother on his team. He got a more sense of possibility. He ain't going to play. Listen. No, it's called come being comfortable. God damn, no. being comfortable, <laughs> being comfortable changes. He stuff, going man. to the G League. The G League. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, he he got some game. I ain't no, gonna lie. He was on our. He was on our. Uh, what? He was on the Windy City Bulls. Yeah, he got game. He got yeah, game. he got game. G League yeah, game. <laughs> Y'all remember? Um, Blake Griffin Big had a brother that he too. hooped with too. But um, hey, that mother look like Mason oh, Blake, oh bro. <laughs> hey, right, I know what you're talking about. So we already talked about the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, and it was inevitable to talk about those guys throughout the, this today because of what happened with uh, Damian Lillard. But just real quick, for the sake of uh, the Central Division preview, um, how y'all feeling about the Milwaukee Bucks? Sixty-two wins. I was about to say sixty. <laughs> They we y'all no know games. why. Over 65, at least 65. Jesus. 65. Damn. At least 65? At least. They going to they gonna destroy the Eastern Conference game. They Bro, I think just, it's going to take them a little minute to, to kind of find It's going to take a little, but it ain't going to be. It's 10 games. If, if, they, look, like 10 if games they win 65 right, games, I'm scared. They, <laughs> they <win>. How many <laughs> games <laughs> you think of that? They going to win 65. It's going to take them a good two, two to three gonna months. It's going it's gonna to take at least 15 games for Dame Lillard just to get used to how the, the lights in the stadium shine off Chris Middleton's forehead. Jesus. Like, and then right it's going to be cold. <laughs> <laughs> he going to be cold as hell. They going to feed his ass nothing but beer and cheese up there. He might gain 25 pounds. Then he going to have to lose it. So after the All-Star <laughs> break, he should be good. So now the real the real concern, like if, if we're going to discuss concerns because we, we can't necessarily be complete prisoners of the moment. They're top heavy, right? They're starters. It's going to be four strong starters with Giannis, uh, Brooke Lopez, and then uh, Dame Lillard, of course, and Middleton. But then you got to worry about the the, the, the role players, right? Um, what's Pat Connaughton going to give you? Is Gordon Dragic going to give you more than he gave the Bulls? Myers oh, Leonard is back in the playing. league. I didn't even know Myers Leonard was in the league. Um, how are we yeah, feeling about Bo- back here? Right, Bobby Portis. They did pick up Malik Beasley. Beasley. Uh, oh, nice Beasley is going to be important for them. That's yeah, nice so. pick up. And then they got Robin Lopez. He snuck on the team too. Hey, he's always yeah. solid. He, he stays solid. 
So, for a backup, uh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, so, hey, that's and a don't forget Jay Crowder too. They still got oh, Jay yeah. Crowder. Oh, they got Jay Crowder too. That's a nice piece. See, that's why I'm not too much worried. Like, yeah, you lost a key piece. Don't get me wrong, you lost a glue piece, but like, you just substitute another glue up in that mug, and that mug can shoot from the field. It's, you know what's I gonna hurt him? Javon Carter is gonna hurt him. That. That well, not just him, but Grayson Allen, too. Yeah. I think Javon yeah. Carter. Nah, Javon him. might hurt more than Grayson, though, low key. Javon, Javon made them like, because I think like Wesley had a down year compared to shooting, and he Javon did. was that dude. Mm-hmm. When it came to still, shots, he's still on the team, Wesley Matthews. Wesley, nah, he's gone. Now nah, he's in, oh. we just talked about him. He's in another team. Where I think in? it's Orlando's. Or, yeah, Orlando. Orlando. Wow. Um. So, you know. At the end of the day, I feel like it, if we have any concern, it's going to be the bench. Uh, the, any, every yeah. great team has, and like, of course, health. Yeah, of course, of course. But if that bench can't come in, it's, health. Uh, I said health. <laughs> it would have health. Health. <laughs> health. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> you know, if, if the bench can't come in and sustain or increase leads, um, it's going to be a problem all season long. So shout out to the uh, Milwaukee Bucks for at least creating a co- championship contender. Um, it's going to be fun to see what Damian Lillard is doing. See what Damian Lillard can do in a situation where he's actually expected to win. All right, you guys, I think that wraps it up. Uh, we already said the win totals. I'm in the 60 plus win category as well with the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, it's going to be a crazy division. Hopefully, the Chicago Bulls can step it up. If if I have to be a homer at any point in this broadcast, this is going to be right now. It'll be cool to see the Bulls at least contend and compete uh, in in the Central Division. But we're going to holler at y'all later. Don't forget to write. Kev, can I day. ask Steve one quick question before we go? This go ain't ahead. even long. Hey, the Bulls line up. <laughs> Say that again? <laughs> what the Bulls line up in this division? What they stop at this division? Just rank them. Probably real quick. six. Six? Are you saying the division? Are you saying the division? Uh, Three. So you got them ahead of Indiana? Yeah. Okay. Either okay. that, either the Indian gonna be ahead of us, or they, be, you know, that vice versa. Yeah, I said they be third. Okay. All right. So we appreciate y'all for rocking with the. Still gotta show me, goddamn. <laughs> the entire Shot Town Sports family, uh, right here on NBA Central, Chicago Bulls, Bears, Sky, White Sox, and Cubs, and Blackhawk Central, as well as the Shot Bulls podcast with. Bobby and C Dub. I'm your boy, Big Bro. We got Steve O speaks. We got C Dub. You're Kevin. Your daddy named you Kevin. We're going to call you Kevin. I'm your boy, Obadiah. Kevin. Okay, <laughs> CJ. Charles Johnson. Cordero. My name is Charles, my nigga. My name is Cordero. Get my right. bad. Cordero. Cordero, he Charles over there and the, the, on the other screen. <laughs> <laughs> we going to holler at y'all later. Peace. Fuck Jerry. This has been a presentation of the Breaks Breaks Media. Media. Media.